look, man, freaking Eternals, or some people say Brick Eternals, man. Um, as I said, I didn't. I really didn't like this film. I really didn't like this film. Um, had so many issues with within this this this, this, this film and, and so forth. And when I say that, it isn't the worst MC movie. No, it's not the worst, but it is the most boring. It is the most boring, you know. And that is maybe why you're seeing the critical because, of course, like there's like Thor. You look at Thor: The Dark World. You look at Iron Man Two, Iron Man Three. Then there's stuff that's much more much out there, but it's the most boring. And you can't make a boring superhero movie like yeah that's what you can make but I just thought I've just made like a few points here with regards to what this is the film that we have how could you have made this film better how could you have made this 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 this, this film better you know because see this this, this is the, the thing when you're coming into the MCU and you have to because you have to understand what tone you want to take you can't make a serious movie in the MCU the most serious movie that was made were well, probably the Captain America films. So specifically First Avenger and Winter Soldier, maybe Civil War. But even those have a lot of jokey stuff within there. So if you're coming here and saying that you want to make a really very epic, very deep, emotional story about love and everything, eh, Kevin Feige gives you in, in the thing. So for me, I think it's the the the, 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 the start, the beginning is that you have an ensemble. And when if you have an ensemble, it is crucial it is cast well and i think there are two big issues here because two of the key characters within this film i don't mean to be harsh look again no one's going to watch this video so i can just talk two of these actors in here are trash they're brick actors i'm sorry like i i'm, I'm just going to be honest these these guys they are they are trash sama hack is a is a is she's not good she, 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 she's a brick actress sama hayek is known for having an incredible body in Desperados. So no, 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 sorry, um, from Dust to Dawn. Go watch her scene, just type in some high from Dust to Dawn. That's her body and that was magnifique. So she's known for that. She's, she's known for that scene in From Dust to Dawn. Gemma Chan, I don't know who she, also she was pretty good in Desperado as well. <laughs> Gemma Chan, I think I, I heard of her, I think, I think she was she in The Misfits or something like, she was in this UK show way, way, way back when. So I'm not really seeing much of her. She's trash. And here's the thing, you know, is this isn't a modeling shoot. This isn't softcore porn. This is film. And in film, you have to know how to act. You have to know how to act. And if you're not coming with any acting quality, it doesn't matter how beautiful you look. Okay, I'm, I'm sure they look beautiful. Actually, you look amazing. <laughs> if you can't act. It's going to be an issue, and I think the biggest issue with that is that you, they, they play such crucial, crucial roles. Sam Hayek's character, you're the leader of this crew. That's a crucial role. For Gemma Chan, this, you're pretty much the spine of the story. Like, the story is told through you. <laughs> you're the person that really things all come through you. So it is very important that you cast strong actresses in those roles, you know? Um, because for me, with the Gemma Chan character, I don't go with like a Tiana Paris, but she's already been act. But she, she's, she's already in um, um the, the the freaking MC thing, Wonder Vision, you know. And for the Salma Hayek character, the name always comes to me. I'd, I'd go with like a Kate Blanchett, who I know is always quality and specifically for that a leadership type of role for a leader. She would have should have been money in that freaking role. So because I just think they were they were cast so badly, you're already. In a very difficult position. Beyond that, they're deviants. Do you know? I was thinking to myself. I was thinking things to myself. Like, oh, wait a minute. Okay, maybe maybe these deviants have to be like monsters and so forth. Because the CGI in this, I swear to you, this is from two thousand six, bro. I swear to you, I've seen CGI, f bro, bro. The CGI in Avatar, which came out in O nine, is better than this. <laughs> the CGI in Avatar, which came out in two thousand and nine. Is better than this. Keeping it a stack. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping it a, a, a stack because I'm like, bro, this is bottom of the level, bottom bar. I mean, why? why <laughs> are you guys being like racist to Chloe Zhao or something? Because like, this is this is like cut rate CGI. But says myself that because in my mind, I think that just if you know that the CGI is going to be like this, just make them make them a humanoid and use pros, pros, prosthetics. Use amazing prosthetics. Go. 
Colop Gamer, Del Toro, and just use prosthetics and so forth. Lo and behold, I go online, check, okay, what, how do the deviants look like in the comics? They're, they're humanoid. So, because you can never go wrong with prosthetics. See, the, the, see this is the issue between CGI and prosthetics. CGI, you're always going to get better. You're always going to get better. You're always going to get better until we can get it fully real. But CGI will always look dated. Avatar, as good as it was in the online, it looks dated now in 2021. What is never dated is prosthetics. Go look at the prosthetics in The Thing by John Carpenter. Look at the prosthetics in um, Total Recall. This will look amazing because it's real. Real can never get outdated, especially if you do it well. Real can never be outdated. That's why the stuff in The Thing still looks amazing. <laughs> it can never be dated. So what should you have done is make them humanoid. Make the defense humanoid, prosthetic, so therefore you're fighting something real because, bro, the action scenes, I fell asleep. During the action scenes, I was fully asleep. I was like, oh, I was asleep. I was like, bro, I, because this thing, I just, I just went to bed because it's, it's fake. It's fake. So I was like, there's nothing to attach myself to. Um, the Deviant. So there was one Deviant that was evolved. The CG on him was trash. The CG on that event was trash. First thing, make that, make use prosthetics, hire Doc, Doc, Doc Jones, who's amazing. You know, hire Doc Jones, who is freaking amazing. Put him in a prosthetic suit and, and make him a character there. That's the one thing. Second thing is, you have to introduce the antagonist earlier on. So what they should have done is establish the fact that when you see that attack in, in London, in Camden Town, bringing that deviant there and then Cersei is like oh there is <laughs> there is this crazy deviant out there that is a lot more stronger so obviously you see them destroying the deviants and everything and then once you see this evolved deviant he now f's up the Richard Madden character and obviously Cersei so they're like whoa whoa whoa, whoa. we're dealing with some kind of crazy deviant and then the story now develops to know that oh this is who they are and then there is now a bit of tension with regards to when the twist happens when you find out the owner, oh no, the, the demons were actually created by the guys who created the tunnels and so forth. Because when the demons comes, it comes in halfway through, you're like, okay, what's this? And he then pretty much disappears and just reappears at the end. You're like, no, the antagonist has to be something that is fully there throughout the film. In almost every film, Iron Man, you see the antagonist all the way through. Captain America, you see the, the antagonist has to be something that is antagonizing the story and the protagonist throughout the entirety of the, of the freaking story. Um, so that's over there, man. Um, what does I say? The group, bro. The group dynamics, it was fine, it was fine, but you didn't because this could have been something different. See, Guardians of the Galaxy and, and the Avengers, okay, you know, they normally sort of get along, obviously, until you got to Civil War. But I think what would have been very good is when that twist happens. There is a split. Now I don't know. I don't care what happens in the comics, but you have to. So you have to add drama. It's not about adaptation. And there should have been much more of a split within the group as to those who believe what this creator did is saying and those who are against what this creator did is, is saying. So there has to be much more of a back and forth and a rupture within the, the group. Because for me, I felt the acting, apart from <laughs> Salma Hayek and Gemma Chan, I thought the acting with everyone else was amazing. I thought everyone else was amazing. Like that's kid who plays the, the really young kid, she was really good. She was really, really, really good. So the acting was quality, but the writing and the scene sets up and the chemistry between them just sort of felt flat. So because you were, you went into one era and another era, because what you do is that, look, tell the story in the past, this will happen in the past, blah, 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 introduce them. Then afterwards, it's about them recruiting everyone else. It's about them recruiting everyone else. And then that's how you can roll, but because beyond that, man, I mean, it was just, man, um, because there's a, cause one, there's a guy's name that I want to get, because I, I want to make sure that I get their names right. Um, what's, what's his name? What's his name? Yes. Kumail, Kumail Nanjiani. Kumail Nanjiani. He's obviously the comic, comic relief of the, of the group. He's obviously the comic relief of the group. You always need the comic relief of the group he wasn't utilized well enough. Because he could have been somebody who could have really brought some life, some nice energy 
into the whole group and I just didn't feel like if he was utilized the word enough because I just felt this, the, this structure of this whole thing was all over the, the, the place, man. The, the structure of this whole thing was all over the, the freaking place, man. To where I was like, ah! Because Kumail could have really been a guy because you could tell that he's got great comic ti timing. He's got great comic timing and he's, got, he's a good comedic character but the way some of the lines he was given and when he was given the lines, it just, it just, it just felt awkward, man. Um, and here's the thing, and now this might sound crazy. How many heroes, heroes, especially superheroes, okay, how many superheroes have an English accent? Think about it. Superman, Batman, Blade, Spider-Man, um, Iron Man, Cap. You know, Wonder, Wonder Woman. I mean, how many characters have English accents? And this is this is the thing. And this is just something that people need to understand. England is the home of acting. Nobody acts better than English people. But when you're casting a film or so, doing a film, your hero can't have an English accent. They can't. Now, they can. What would be very interesting is maybe a hero with like a Cockney accent. Now, that would be interesting, like a working class accent, that would be interesting because now, okay, this is something a little bit new. So, like, a, like an anti-hero. So, if you're doing an anti-hero, a cockney working class accent, now, that could work. But a posh accent as a hero doesn't work. So, apart from Gemma Chan, it's just where the he see, the English, guys with that English accent, they are like the villains or key characters that you, that you surround the hero with and so forth. Because heroes, the really iconic heroes, have American accents. They have American, you just know what it is, you know, Marty McFly, Indiana Jones, Luke Skywalker, they all have American accents because the American accent just works best for the hero and the English accents work best for the guys that surround the, the, the hero, you know? Because for Jim first of all, you have a, a trash actress who, she's trash. Like, just, I'm sorry, I, I mean, I, I, I'm supposed to be honest, man. No, 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 no one cares what I say. She's garbage. She's, she's, a, she's a garbage actress. And she's got a very strong English accent. So you're like, this is just bad. <laughs> this is just because like, I can't connect with you as a, as a hero. I can't. I, I, I just kind of like, no, this, it, it, it just doesn't work. Um, but I see the story of this, because it's tough, but there is a story here. It's time this, the, the story of this is you have this group who feel their enemy are these deviants. Lo and behold, that's the, when they now find out that these the creator created these deviants and created the eternals and so forth that is now where you now have a split within people who now want to control so you, that's how you now have the tension because there are people who now believe the path of what the creator says and the people who don't so that's where your real tension relies but you have to really properly establish that at the start and the way you establish that at the start is cutting away a lot of the, the fat cutting away a lot of the the, the fluff and I think a big thing is, even with the issues with the script and so forth, if you had a better actress in Salma Hayek, and especially a better actress in Gemma Chan, who can, because quality actors can elevate an average script. A crap script with, sorry, a great script with crap actors, bro, you can, you can only go so far. You can, you can, only, you can only go so far. A average script, with great actors, they can elevate it. Even a bad script, it's all be a bad one, but they can still help to. Because that's what I'm not thinking like, okay, if I say the words this kind of way and I put this intonation on it, I can sort of make it seem a lot better than how it actually reads on the page. So, but I just think that for the Eternals, like, yeah, you needed to. It, it's needed. A, the big issue is, is it's boring. So when you say your film is boring, that is an editing issue. And that is a structure issue. And that issue is where there's a lack of focus, there's a lack of bite. Because how you stop your film from being boring comes to pacing and editing. So no, take that scene out, take that scene out. That scene drags for way too long. Cut it there, cut it there, cut it there. Quickly get to the point and so forth. So how you make it not boring is you have to have great chemistry, amazing chemistry where everybody is a top tier actor. So, and that's the key thing. You, that's why I said the stats and the stats. Every one of these guys have to be quality actors because quality actors can help to create that, that chemistry. So that's why you have to look at Chloe Zhao. Chloe Zhao, I mean, why did you pick Salma Hayek in this role? Because this role requires acting. <laughs> why did you pick her in this role? 
why did you pick Gemma Chan? And I get, okay, you both didn't you know, I get that. But why do you pick Gemma Chan in this role? Because it's such an important role. Bro, do you know what was most important about Iron Man? Downey Jr. Iron Man is a... <laughs> that guy was a freaking C-level character. But Downey Jr. is such a good actor. He turned the role into something iconic because of how good he is as an actor. If you picked a brick actor to be Iron Man, bro, that film ain't good anyway. Iron Man's success... Yes, John Favreau did a good job, but the, the, the main success was how good of an actor Danny Jr. was. Chris Evans ain't a great actor. He I He's better than the German chat, but he ain't great. But this was just amazing casting, thanks to Joe, because Joe Johnson was that. I know there are better actors out there. This dude is, I, is Captain America, and he this role was made for him. So, that's how you have that. But So, if you don't get the casting right, you are already on the back foot. You're already on the back foot. So, I just think that... Because, no, I think that's just the main thing. Like, that, that was your nugget. Was that evolved deviant. And making that evolved deviant a character. And using damn fucking frost prosthetics, bro. You can't... See, this thing... I don't know. You don't have to use CGI all the time, bro. You don't have to, man. You don't have to. I, I don't know how to explain it. You don't have to use CGI all the freaking time. You can use prosthetic. Bro, look her. Um, oh gosh. Hellboy. Del Toro's Hellboy. Look at how good those characters look. Look, imagine if Del Toro made, made, made those characters CGI. It wouldn't look the same. The reason why people love Hellboy so much is because, man, the art direction and the prosthetics and the makeup is freaking amazing. So imagine if you had an amazing makeup artist to really make the deviants look really... Forget about the comments. Give them a really good, amazing, iconic look. And give the main deviants an iconic, interesting look. And he's real. Bro, the film changes completely. If those deviants are real, and it's now real actor against real actor, acting against one, one another, it changes it. It's, com it's a completely different movie. Because you now feel that because the big issue is people would have fallen asleep during those actions being scenes because that CGI is... It's a cartoon. <laughs> it's a freaking cartoon. So you're like, oh, okay, oh, okay, so that's all right, bro. So, here's what it is. That's just my thoughts then.